Let's look at synchronous and asynchronous multiplexing. So by design, multiplexing is synchronous. Uh, typically we'll give, here's three different conversations, conversation A, B, and C, and a packet for, uh, comes in from A, and this equipment, whatever equipment over here is receiving it, says, okay, this time slot is given to A, and then I'll shoot it off toward wh whoever is supposed to receive, be the receiver for A. And then B, it, it'll say, this time slot, I'll give that to B. This time slot, I'll give it to C. And so it just keeps shooting data, A, B, C, A, B, C, and so on, by these ticks of the clock. But what happens if somebody doesn't need to communicate? Here C didn't need to communicate, and B and C here didn't need to communicate. They didn't have that much data. Well, now this uh, what this receiving equipment over here has to skip a, a, a beat here, and that's not as efficient. I can't get as many packets across here as I as I really could. This is not as full as it could be. Much like when you're driving down the highway on a you know early Sunday morning at three in the morning or something, uh, and there aren't very many cars on the road. The road is not really performing to capacity. Well, we want as many cars on our road as we can possibly get. So what do we do? Well, we use asynchronous multiplexing. So I can give away that time slot to somebody who needs it more. So now, say A has a lot of conversation going on, so I'll give that away. Uh, but, of course, I have to have some sort of of header or flag here so that the receiving equipment knows, oh, yeah, that's an A, not a B or a C. So this does include some additional software. It's not just a matter of, of how we put them on the wire. Uh, by the way, there are a couple of different ways that we could think about doing this. We could say, well, A can request uh, extra slots if they're available. And so that would be kind of by need. Or we could say, well, A has priority, so I'm going to give A twice as many slots as I give B and C. In that case, I might have something, I didn't draw it here, but I might have something like AABC, AABC. That would be asynchronous as well. So there are a couple of different ways that we could actually uh, uh, perform this. Well, that's asynchronous and synchronous multiplexing. And of course, we used time division multiplexing in this particular example. Uh, there will be other, uh, other ways to do it in frequency division multiplexing, but this gives you the idea of synchronous and asynchronous.